the founder of Peak Music UK and the We Are The Unheard campaign, a campaign for the equality of women in the music industry. The next video you're going to see is of two amazing mastering engineers, Piper Payne and Tony Jack Mance, who both joined me for my event on International Women's Day, and they will be discussing how they can be mentors to young upcoming engineers. So welcome back to the Unheard International Women's Day event. Today, tonight, should I say, or morning, I don't know, it's, it's so many different time zones. It's tonight here, it's like early in the morning for Tony and afternoon for Piper. So we want to welcome you all, thank you for your patience. So once again, I've got the amazing Piper Payne and the amazing Tony Jack Mance. Um, I'd like to thank everybody watching again for supporting the campaign. Please head over to my website, peakmusic.uk, grab yourself a t-shirt. All proceeds go back into training young women in music production and songwriting. Okay, so now I'm gonna leave these lovely guys to get on with it. Um, and I'm gonna take a back seat and listen to this amazing conversation. So thank you again, guys. It's an absolute honor to have you. And I'm so grateful that you have given your time today. Thank you so much. Well, well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, even thanks to uh, this group for putting this incredible con conference on. Um, Tony, you want to you want to kick it off or you want me to start? I think um, I think I'd like you to start. I think it's International All Women's right. Day. So I'd, I'd like to uh, throw it over to you. And I'm going to be very happy to just come in and uh, support this. Uh, and we'll have a good chat. But yeah, please, please. Ladies first. Well, as I, say. I guess us ladies, have, uh, as Jonah said earlier, have waited a whole year for this day. So here we go. Um, I, uh, I'm Piper Payne. I am a mastering engineer. Um, I'm based in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm currently sitting outside of uh, my vinyl record pressing plant, which is getting put together as we speak. Um, and so uh, I, uh, I'm sitting out in the beautiful sunlight, which will, the light will probably change so I can totally move at some point. But um, I, uh, I master records for a living, but I do a lot of other things. Um, I do a lot of uh, volunteer work to try and um, uphold the integrity of music and make sure that artists can get paid. I uh, mentor younger folks um, coming up in the industry, and, uh, and I definitely fight for, um, for creatives and their copyright. And, um, and I think that one of the, one of the hardest things um, to get going in the business of audio and music is simply finding the right people to be supportive and finding your community. And so that's what I want to talk a lot, uh, talk about with, uh, with Tony Jack Mance today. Um, but the, uh, the biggest thing that I hope is a takeaway is uh, maybe some, some uh, ways of being or some understanding of the fact that it's really, really difficult for everyone to get started in this industry. And for those of us that are a little bit more advanced in our careers, to be able to be as supportive as possible um, to those folks coming up. And so Tony and I are going to talk about a few ways that you can do that and, and can, um, can uh, uh, at least be a little bit more understanding or, or recognize that, yes, it was hard when we were coming up, but it's really, really hard now. So that's, uh, that's my intro. That's my spiel. Tony, can you want to tell, tell the group a little bit about yourself, please? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, first of all, happy International Women's Day. Um, I have so much love and respect for women. I was birthed through a woman. And it's wonderful that we have this uh, day of recognition today. So I'm, I feel, I feel honoured that I'm able to come and join in this conversation today. And I'm particularly delighted to be talking with you, Piper, because we're, um, we've had a podcast together. We... We, we, we converse really well. I think we agree on so many other things that we're going to be talking about today. But a little bit about myself. Um, my name is Tony Mance, and I'm known as Jack the Bear. That's a long story for another day. Um, I, I hail... Oh, wow. You rock. Oh, I had to match one as well. There you go. Um, <laughs> thank, uniform. Thank you. 
Thank you for representing. I really appreciate that. Uh, I'm from I'm from Melbourne, Australia, and uh, like Piper, I'm a master engineer and have been since the 80s. I have my own studio called Deluxe in Melbourne. Um, now, uh, apart from that, like Piper, I too um, have a, a passion for mentoring young creatives, and um, I'm, I've been inspired to do that uh, because uh, when I was young trying to make my way into the industry, I was very fortunate that I had come across wonderful people who didn't know me at all, but still would give me the time of day, um, gave me some attention. And more importantly, um, they gave me the impression, well, well, certainly I felt from them that they believed in me. And, and I feel that uh, the greatest thing you can do for a youngster is have them feel that you believe in them and that you you, you, that you got something going and that you encourage them and, and provide, you know, because I, I think we all have these pivotal moments in our life that set us off on a different trajectory. And, and I know myself, there'll be moments where someone said something or maybe even didn't say something uh, at that moment that took me in, in a direction that otherwise I would not have gone in and help follow a different life track. Um, I, um, I, I love talking to young kids. I, I feel personally myself, I think the biggest issue that I find uh, why a lot of youngsters um, and even older people as well for that matter, particularly youngsters, um, with the epidemic of a lack of self-esteem. And, and I feel that in life, uh, until you feel that you're deserving of something, uh, until you're worthy of something, then it's very difficult to be able to receive opportunities and receive um, goodness, if you will, uh, coming your way. So for me, I, I think that, um, you know, part of the discussion, I think today if we could pipe is just to touch a little bit on building self-esteem, um, ways, of, ways of being able to build that within ourselves. And, and, and I can share a few ideas and strategies that people can walk away with today to implement today yeah. after this discussion to help build that. Love it. I love that you that we're starting on mentorship because I think that that's some like direct mentorship, like directly impacting someone's life. Because, like you said, for you, that's how you got where you're at. For me, that's how I got where I'm at. Some people don't have mentors coming up, and they have a completely different experience than than we do. But I do think that uh, that that like direct mentorship having you know someone take me under their wing and say like I am going to teach you and I'm going to help you not make the same mistakes I did so that you maybe have to run just a little bit less hard or just a little bit less far than it took me to get to where I'm at and I think that that is one of the most one of the most important things about mentorship and about spending time with someone who um has has made those mistakes and has a vested interest in helping you not do that too whether it's a financial interest or whether it's some skill that you possess that they don't and they need they need you to do that thing whatever it is um or if it's simply that they um they appreciate you and love you and just want to help you out of the good of the, uh, goodness of their heart any of those things are okay in in mentorship and i think that that is um I think that that's not really understood all the time. A lot of yeah. times we have in, interns or folks that come and spend time at the studio. And that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about someone who is your, you know, like your, uh, your sort of loyal and trusting and trustworthy with and to them. And that is that, that kind of relationship is, I think the thing that helps sust, um, build and sustain careers and then also like connecting them to their networks. So I want to make sure we talk a little bit about community too and about finding your people and finding those folks um, that are going to be supportive of you no matter how much success you have and, um, and you're not going to end up uh, somehow on their blacklist for, for being successful because that's a real thing that happens in the industry too. And nobody likes to talk about it, but it's, but it's real. So what do you think makes uh, other than uh other than you know helping someone build self-confidence what do you think makes a good support and a good ally in this business tony what have you learned along the way i think um i think a good ally or, uh is someone that is as you said you know trustworthy and, and trusting 
and available. But I also believe that um, a good ally is someone that you could talk to about lots of different things. It's not just about industry related, about learning how to use a compressor and EQ. Or I think it's also about um, teaching how to learn about building relationships. Because I think the greatest skill in this business and in life itself for that matter is the ability to nurture and, 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 you know, find, build relationships and nurture them and foster them and, mm-hmm. and, and build upon them because we are now. Well, this is a relationships business. It's it a service business and a relationships business. And Absolutely. if you can grasp that, you'll, you'll be successful. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and I was very fortunate that um, my main mastery mentor, Rick Essig, who was at Frankfurt Wayne, which is now closed down, unfortunately, in New York, um, he said to me, and, um, you know, 80% in his, new, in his New Jersey fashion, just said to me, listen, um, understand something that 80% of this business is BS. And I looked at him very sort of weirdly. I said, what do you mean by that? He said, it's, uh, BS, man. You know, it's um, it's it's about the hang time. It's about connecting. Yeah. It's about people liking you. It's about you know you're in closed, confined quarters with someone for several hours, and if they don't like you, if they don't feel that you're invested in their record, you know, you could be a hundred percent fantastic technically, but if people don't like mm-hmm. you, people don't trust you, and and that's you know, so this is the relationship economy, and the yeah. currency is trust. Trust is yeah. and. And trust is something that you own and you build over time. Yeah. Right. So and so and 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 through your network vouching for you too. You oh, know, absolutely. I mean, I I think that that's a big part of mentorship and support is having us having a um a, a person to vouch for you too. Most definitely. You know. Yeah. And and so often you know I mean and this is how the word we talk about word of mouth, which is the. Mm-hmm. The best social media, if you will, um, and and that's that kind. Of, you know, people. I, I find that um, I, one of the things I tell kids often, Piper, is uh, they ask, "Well, how am I going to get my clients, and how do I start out?" Very good, very valid questions, and completely understood. I said, "Don't don't try and chase the clients. The clients will chase you, and yeah. and, that'll, and that will come by you know doing the work, doing the repetition, building the skills, you know, staying true to yourself." understanding the why you get involved in this business. You know? If so many mm-hmm. people don't sit down and think about, well, why am I getting involved? Yes, I love music and I have a passion for music, but that a lot of people love that's, music. But that, that's not going to sustain you. No. You have, to, uh, you have to be driven to get up every day and do this. And, it's, and, it, and if you were to ask me, well, why, well what's your why of being here? It's, it's about service. It's about service to my client. It's about service to my yeah. community. It's about making a contribution. And, you know, even about making a legacy, it's about, you know, how can I make a difference in my community? Because this is the community that has served me, that has looked after me, that's allowed me to put food on the table. It's allowed mm-hmm. me to have a, a lifestyle. I, I, I'm not rich by any means, but I do live richly. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm happy. I feel like I live the dream. So, so to me, I, I feel a sense of duty and, um, you know, and, and I need to put something back in. And, and right. so I'm up early this morning. And the reason I'm here is because now I don't know what our audience is today, but I know that there's someone out there listening and hoping to get something of value today. And that's what got mm-hmm. me up early today, other than anything else, the fact that potentially you or I may say something that will create that pivotal moment for some kid out there today, you know? so. Oh, man, that's a lot of pressure now. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not hard when you're talking about the stuff you love. And I that, know. I'm that, just kidding. That, I, yeah. I do think... I do want to pick up on one thing you said, though, which is something that I always think about. And this goes back again to supporting those who are around you and being supportive uh, as being supported and how how that it's a two way street. OK, so when I was first getting started, I, um, you know, I had always been told like, oh, you, you need to advertise or you need to tell people what you do or you need to somehow get out there. And I, I love that you, you mentioned that the work, you know, doing the work and doing good work and your reputation will speak for itself because that's the truth. But until it does, you need to have um, a whole bunch of folks out there in the world sending good, you know, like sending out your good vibes and, and, and kind of helping you cast that wide net. 
And one of the things that I always think about is that I would rather have a hundred little tiny, tiny megaphones out there in the world telling people about what I do than one big megaphone for myself. And I think that that is, that perspective has been really helpful for me in my career, but here's the thing. I have a whole bunch of little tiny megaphones out there, but I need to support and take care of every single one of them too. So I also need to be a little tiny megaphone for them, right? It's a, it's a network. It's a, it's like a whole ecosystem that has to be fed constantly. And you have to take care of those people that take care of you. So that's one thing I want to make sure that we hit on as a, as a, 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 a key takeaway from this talk is yes, you might have a mentor, but guess what? You being a mentee is just as valuable to them or should be. It's got to be a double, a two-way street. It's not a one-sided relationship. Absolutely. And it's all about, contrib- everything about to build the relationships, remember, it's about contribution. It's always about, right. you know, it's the laws of nature, you know, growth and contribution. And yeah. one cannot happen without the other. And, and, and when I say by, by contribution, the, the way, one of the things I tell kids is when they want to network or get into you know, this is the greatest time for you kids to be alive in terms of being able to contact engineers or producers <clears throat> that you would like to meet, work with, but potentially be mentored by. Just to give you some context around this, and this is showing my age and I'm fine with this. For, for me, you know, to contact somebody, I went over to America by writing a letter. So it was a letter that it took five days at best to get there. If I was lucky and they opened it on the day and if I was lucky enough and they responded on the day and if I was lucky enough that they sent it back, it would be another five days. So, but now with one of these, (laughs) you guys have the golden ticket, the Willy Wonka ticket to access people. And for the most part, most engineers are people that are behind their social media. So it's not a, a matter of, going to two or three gatekeepers to get in touch with anyone. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and you can hit people directly. Now, one of the things, as someone that gets approached quite often by people, I'll just share with you some of the things that I find are helpful and some of the things that are probably not so helpful. Um, remember that when you are hitting up someone, they're doing you the solid, not the other way around. Okay? So, first of all, if they don't get back to you straight away, please don't take it personally because people are busy. Second of all, do some research on who you want to work with. Be, right. I find that the people that contact me and, and, and actually can tell me something about me, not to stroke my ego, but show me that they've done a little bit of homework on me. They've done about right. whether it's a record that they like or they, they're into a hobby that I'm into, something you can talk to on an on a even, you can be on even, even playing with people. That, that gets my attention. That gets yeah. my attention. So, do, do, my favorite, do, my favorites are uh, people that that email me and email me literally to my mastering address and tell me that they want to help me record things. Uh, it's like, did you even pay? Did you even look at the the website? Have you read anything? You know, there's a there is a a whole bunch of people that are out there cold calling and um, and you know. Yes, there are some, you know, there are some things that are mistaken or like, you know, put wrong or whatever, but you can always get an idea from the email if they even know who you are or if they're literally just emailing every single person they can find on the internet, right? Exactly, exactly. So, so do your homework on who you want to, and, and be, and be clear as to why it's not, it's not, it's not, not, it's, it's nice to be complimentary about, I really like your work and whatever, but <clears throat> but really, it, it, it's, you know, I'll give an example. Someone hit me up once and said, um, look, I don't know if this is of any value to you, but I'm really good at social media. Now, I'm terrible, now, I'm terrible at social media. <laughs> I, I do my own. I don't think it's all that great, but, but I, I knew that I could, you know, use some help. And someone said to me, look, would you mind if I would love to be able to shadow you for a day and, and in exchange for that, I'd like to maybe help you with my social media. And I thought, wow. That's amazing. So here's someone coming with something of value that I thought was tremendous, and and for me it was it was it was it was a no brainer. So you might be really good with computers. You might be really good with tech repairing equipment. You might have other skills that could be of use to someone. As Piper said, it's the two way thing. So these are things to consider. And and please don't ever start an email with to whom it may concern or dear chief engineer or anything like that either. <laughs> Yeah, 
that, 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 like, that, that, I, uh, that. Uh, I am the prince of Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> Long lost relative has left you 30. Yeah. Years. <laughs> it's not going to cost you a thousand dollars a month. Or the best, the best one that's going around right now. I've, I've been trying to get in touch with you regarding your car warranty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, I think that I think that's awesome advice. All of that, and um, and I also want to make sure that if we have time, we can talk about you know other ways to be a good mentee or a good uh, you know a good receiver of that support. But I want to talk a little bit about how we as engineers that are doing okay right now can be more helpful uh, to those folks that are just getting started that have no idea what they're doing. Like they have no idea what they want to be. They don't, uh, you know, the sky's the limit. They maybe, maybe they can record drums pretty well, but they don't. And they've never, they've never even seen isotope before or something like they belong in the business, but they don't really know what they want to do. So yeah. I've been trying to think of ways to help folks. Cause I get asked that question a lot. Like, how'd you get into mastering? That seems like such a, um, you know, it seems like such a very focused decision that you had to make to get into that. Why that? And I was just like, well, if I, I didn't really know I was going to be in, in a mastering when I first got started, it just sort of happened that way. And that's not an answer for, and that's not like a good concrete answer for anybody. But the only thing I can ever say is like, tr just be open-minded and to take every opportunity that you possibly can say yes, as much as you can unless it is going to be severely detrimental financially, or it is going to be working with someone that you really are not comfortable working with, the, the goal should be to expand your horizons, expand your skill set, and learn more about all of these other parts of the industry that you could potentially make money uh, in and build a career in. Yeah, yeah. Well, <clears throat> like you, um, I, I told people that Mastery found me, and, and you're right, that's not a... An, an adequate answer, but I, but I, I, if we just talk about mastery just for a minute, I'm. If you if you're in a situation you're not quite sure about where to go, what to do, first of all, mm -hmm. I think it's good in this current day and age to have um, a broad range of skills. Um, yeah. And if you do happen, for example, if you can become quite proficient at mixing and mastering, don't listen to what people say that you can't master your own mixes. A lot of purists will say that. <laughs> And I'm here to tell you that is uh, it's, it's just a, it's a load of rubbish. And it's just um, so hard. It's just so uh, much harder, though. Yeah. Well, so, maybe yeah, it is. Man. But, but know, I think you I'll, learn more about your skills if you. I think everybody should do that at some point in their lives. Absolutely. You know, yeah. And and if you and if you happen to work on something that blows up, that maybe you mixed or mastered or whatever, then maybe you can find your niche uh, t down that path. But. One of the things I would encourage people to do is see mastering is one of those parts of our industry that does not have the same, even with the internet and the exposure to it and the, um, we, um, we don't have um, the same level of prestige and profile. And there's a reason for that, I mm -hmm. guess. Um, someone like a Chris, you know, mixing is 90% of the work and we're the guys who frame the pictures. Uh, and so it's, it's deserving that someone like a Chris Lord Algy will make more money than an engineer of, of you know, of, of, say like a, a, Bob, a Bob Ludwig. So, but um, I would encourage people to get into mastering. It's a, it's a wonderful, uh, it's a wonderful gig. It's a lot of fun. Um, and, and one great practical way that you can uh, get involved is, is first of all, listen to lots of different styles of records to get a feel for how different records mm -hmm. sound and, and across different genres. And, and, and also, look, there's lots of great tutorials online you can find. And just do your own practice at home. I just tell kids, find old records, you know, and, and just try and create compilation records that you can create a consistency across the board and, and to tune your ears and tune your skills. And, and the more you can do that, right. the better you're going to get at the craft. And, that, and that's a really good way to get that, – that's basically back in the day, that's what I did, lots of compilations. Just, just yep. be able to take 20 different songs – and, and make them sound somewhat cohesive so that they make sense. And, and this is what your, your mentor 
would tell you if you were going to go and, and work with a, with someone who's a mastering engineer or a mixing engineer. That is, I think, one of the best ways to be supportive of younger folks is to help them find those records that we know and love and that we think sound really good and help point them towards that. Like I have a, um, I just have a really dumb listening playlist that of records that are out right now that I think sound pretty good. And I think that that's always a good place to start just like on iTunes. But um, more yeah. importantly though, is that they, these um, you know, folks coming up need to have access to uh, higher quality, um, higher quality sound. Uh, they need to know what records on tape sound like. They need to know what vinyl sounds like. Um, and I think that that type of ear training and being able to point people towards those really awesome, um, just standard records for things that we have to know and, and understand intimately to be able to do our job, whether it's mixing or mastering or recording or, um, or any, or even just being involved in as a general producer, you have to have a library of sound and, and an understanding of what, um, what records are out there so that we know what things are supposed to sound like or could sound like. Right. Yeah, it's kind of like having, you know, having Google maps on your phone, you don't just start driving. You, you have an idea of where you want to go. And then the, you know, the, you set yourself up with a map and, and you start driving. It's not, um, it's not like rocket science. It's actually pretty simple, but it's a thing that everybody forgets. It's about the music. It's about yeah the it's about the um engaged listening and listening in groups is incredible for building your listening chops and so Absolutely. i like i like organizing i mean when it's safe again one day organizing listening parties and having you know like you know having people over to the studio we sit down we listen to a record or two we you know have a, have a drink or have some snacks or whatever sit and chat and talk about the record and I learn things every single time about records that I've, I've listened to a hundred times and someone else will hear something different and call your attention to it. And that I think is one of the most powerful ways to train your ears. Okay. Forget the golden ears thing. Forget the like picking out frequencies and things like that. Figure out what makes a good record, a good record. It's not yeah. going to be something super tangible like, Oh, well this, it has lots of 400 Hertz. It's not that. It's the decisions in the arrangement. It's the decisions in the songwriting. It's the decisions in which drummer needs to play on this song. And those are the things that you only find out when you dig in to a record really deeply and you have someone else who might know more about that record or that process. And I think that that's a form of mentorship and support too. Most definitely. Most definitely. Uh, it's a bit like a, a music book club. Yeah. Record club. Yeah. yeah record yeah. club. Um, exactly. Can I just um, talk a little bit about peer group, Piper? Um, and that is that um, even as youngsters who are coming in, um, it's so important to find a good supportive peer group around you. And yeah. again, even, if, if, even if you're in the, in, in the middle or somewhere in Midwest America, you know, or, you know, Outback Australia, we now have old mate over here. Yeah. That, that allows you to connect with all these forums uh, online uh, and that cover all kinds of different groups and, and, and various niches um, that you can tap into and, uh, and you can have these, um, you know, whether the virtual, I mean, it's, of course, it's lovely to be face to face with people in the same room looking at each other eye to eye, but even in the virtual world, look, um, some, of my, some of my dearest friends, I'm speaking to one right now, I've never met in real, real life, but but here we are, you know, as a result of this wonderful technology, and yeah. and and and, and a, 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 a peer, and and you know, and and what's important in a peer group is is it's not just to find a whole lot of people that are your yes yes men and women around you, but um, people that will hold you accountable, people that will lift you up as well, um, yeah. and and people that have um, a shared interest in in your success because. I believe in the adage that um, your success is mine, and and when I can contribute to your success, I agree. When I, and when, when I can help you with resources, when I can help you to put steer in the right direction, um, but also when I can help you being able to have a tough conversation to pull you inside. Hey, you know, listen, I 
you know, I, I've been noticing something which I'd like to raise with you. And, and there are ways of being able to have these conversations um, respectfully, you know, mm-hmm. and, and subtly. I, and I think more than anything, it's just honesty, you know. Oh, my <laughs> it's telling... It's, it's telling truth about whatever it is and not putting that stuff off. I mean, we as, I think that um, as engineers, you know, we're so focused on the work and focused on the project that we're, we're sitting with. Um, yeah. And we forget that we're all humans and we, ha- we all have, you know, we, we fuck up, we have feelings, we get, we, we, we get hurt by other people. Um, we, we hurt other people. I think that, but, un, um, having the, the courage to be honest and, and be truthful about whatever it is, no matter how inelegant you're going to say it, or, um, if you, even if you can't find the right words, I think that having that type of, um, that type of, uh, not training, but, but, um, that practice, also makes us more truthful engineers too. Yeah, so you can, you can put, even if you can't put your finger on exactly what's wrong with this record, you can say something's wrong. I'm going to explore that. I'm going to be curious about it. And I think that doing that with um, other people too is, is, is a good practice. It's super important. Most definitely. Couldn't agree anymore. Could not agree anymore. Absolutely. So, um, Piper, just one other thing I wanted to touch on because I've got about another 10 minutes over here before I've got to skedaddle. Um, I touched on earlier about, about self-esteem before and um, I can tell you from my own experience that I, um, I suffered from a chronic lack of it for the majority of my life um, and my lack of esteem really came as a result of, um, you know, my father telling me I wasn't good enough and that I was never going to make it and all this sort of stuff. And I, and I took on the narrative. And the first step for me to being able to reclaim that was to, um, first of all, <clears throat> not buy into the story any longer. Um, we, we are creatures of habit and we have certain thought processes that we have. We uh, continue in the back of our mind subconsciously um, is to let go of the story now um, now, letting go of the story sounds very simplistic, and it is, but it, it takes work. So I think we, we need to do the work on ourselves in order to help ourselves to let go of our story and recreate a new narrative, which is I am worthy, I am lovable, uh, I, I can do this, I will do this, um, it is my birthright, I will do the work and I will succeed uh, and, and create a new story for yourself. And, and, and peer group is the first point of call to helping because it, it's the people that you hang with uh, have great influence upon you. So if you're going to hang around a bunch of people that are ambitious, that are friendly, that are cool, that are supportive, uh, that are honest, that are real, uh, you will become, if you're around five people like that, you're going to be the sixth person. If you're going to be around five people that are complaining and whinging and whining and carrying on and playing the victim and blaming everyone else for their circumstances and for why they're not getting to where they feel they need to get to, guess what? You're going to be number six, whether you like it or not. You just will. So so be, uh, be, be selective of who you hang around with. Uh, be discerning. It's not about being a snob. It's not about being better than anyone else. Well, it's, it's protecting your reputation too, because there are folks. I mean, I, that was one thing I wanted to talk about at some point where, you know, we'll have to pick this up on a podcast sometime, but um, yeah. you know, there are predatory uh, tendencies, maybe not on purpose, but um, even with the benefit of the doubt, there are some practices that folks that are advanced in the industry have that are not really okay. And um, if you get kind of lumped, get kind of lumped in with the wrong group or the wrong folks, it can hinder or even suffocate your career. Um, And also, you know, I mean, I always say this, like protect your reputation at all costs and understand who you are in the industry and understand how you're seen in the industry. I think that that is extremely important. Um, I have a particular, um, tendency to be very aloof and just continue forward and do my thing. And that, you know, I, after it took me, a, a took me a couple of hard lessons to recognize that, that, you know, the folks that don't really know me, um, may see that as, uh, 
you know, a, some sort of a, a shitty way to be. I don't even know how to explain it, but um, it's just me. I'm just doing my thing. I'm just continuing forward. And I have a general feeling that if I'm not hurting anybody and they're not hurting me, everybody just keep going. Um, but the, uh, the, the importance of understanding your place in the industry and, and, and your place in relation to other folks, I think is very, very important. I only found that out after I let, I, you know, left the business arrangement that I had for a very long time. And I found out later on, you know, I had so many people coming up to me saying, Oh, wow. You're out on your own now. Thank God. I've been wanting to send you a record for years. And I just, you know, it always felt so weird to send it to you in, you know, when you were in this other thing. And I was just like, what is that about? Like how many opportunities did I miss out on? Because I couldn't see that that um, situation I was in was not helpful really to my career in the long run mm. for years. And I think that it's really, really important for those of you that are coming up to understand that when something's not working anymore, have the bravery and the courage and the honesty and really the kindness to terminate it before it becomes something that is really detrimental either to you or your career or your financial situation or any other future choices you're going to have. And I think that that kindness thing and the courage is something that it took me a lot of years to, to find and to get. But once I did, things just skyrocketed. Yeah, I can, I can see that. Um, kindness rules kids. <laughs> it really does. Yeah um and it's and understanding uh, understanding that other people suffer you know like mm. you have your own shit i got my own shit let's not yeah. add more shit to each other's shit yeah i think um i think one of the things that um has, has been helpful to <laughs> that brings even that, that that that's a that's a t-shirt right that's a t-shirt right there <laughs> yeah Oh, Should we wrap this up? Tony, I love, love talking to you all the time. And it's really nice to be able to talk to you in front of other people. This is awesome. This thank is you everybody for tuning in. Yeah, yeah, this yeah has thank been the you. Most it is awesome. Amazing yeah. conversation. Listening to you two, I've just been, I haven't been able to take my like move. It's been oh, wow. so are you okay? Do you need a bathroom break? Should we should we end? I think I need help. <laughs> It's been and, so inspirational and the honesty that you're both talking about and the fact that you recognize the responsibility you have to uh, other people is, is amazing. And, and it's what I was saying earlier about um, when I started this session, um, not only are you amazing in what you're doing um, in terms of your talent, but as human beings, it's so important um, that there are people like you in this industry and, and that people can see you. So thank you so much for joining me. I'm getting a bit emotional now. Being visible <laughs> and, and just yeah, being you, man. You're, you're amazing human beings. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks you. for having it's, us. Thank you for putting this on. No, uh, absolutely. It, it, um, I have, I'm lost for words. No, no, it's uh, it's been an honour and a privilege. And and Piper, again, uh, I love you. You're amazing. You You're did. awesome. And and um, I, I feel very uh, very very proud to know you and to be be a peer alongside you. Um, and, Likewise. And and, and, and and again, the, the t today today's conversation was just a. It's tip like this may have not have been recorded. It's typical of what Piper and I talk about. It's uh, we, um, you know, we're we're passionate and we love talking about this stuff and we believe in this stuff and it's it's our day to day. So it's easy to do. It's um, it's yeah. because it's, a, it's our collective uh, to each other and, and and to the world and um, and you know and, and and the other thing I I'm, I'm we talked a bit before about kindness. One one of my just one club just one of my great lessons I learned was as I learned to become more honest and vulnerable with the world and, and open my heart and be true to everything, which meant not just sharing the good stuff, but also where I went wrong, uh, where the mistakes I made, you know, and I was told once, you better watch that, you better watch that, you know, people may use it against you. Um, and, and, you know, I just thought, no, because I know that people know truth. People feel truth. You can't bullshit a bullshitter, as they say. And so, yeah. so the more I allowed myself to be completely open 
and vulnerable and honest uh, about myself and my journey uh, mm-hmm. and about my feelings and, and how and expressing them, then um, you know it, it's amazing how things shifted for me. Uh, not just with my work, but also in in in, the, in respect to the mentoring and um, and so um, so I'm just going to, before I, I, I bail out. Um, I'm, I'm just uh, for whoever is. Um, would love to contact me who may be online. Um, you can find me online through Facebook. Um, I'm, I'm pretty responsive um, through Messenger and they want to ask me a question or whatever. Um, I can't get back immediately, but I promise I will answer everyone and uh, and I will provide, uh, you know, hopefully some input. So, no, I'm approachable. Um, there are no stupid questions. The only stupid questions are the ones you don't ask in my world. So um, there, 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 nothing's too big, nothing's too hard for me. I'll, uh, I'm a big boy, I can take it, and I'll be uh, happy to, to serve you guys should you feel you'd like to contact me. You're welcome to do so. Right on, Tony. Uh, uh, I'll leave you with uh, one, uh, one saying that I have, which is that uh, mastering engineers always get the last word. But now we have two mastering engineers, so I'm not sure who's getting the last word. But you can find me on the internet. You can always bug me. Um, I'm Piper Payne. And uh, uh, I really appreciate having the time to chat today. I mean, you can play the song and I'll dance everyone out. Oh, here. Let me find it. Here we go. I've got it. Thank you so much for joining, guys. You guys are awesome. I Happy Interactive you. Women's Day. Oh, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> I think everybody needs a little bit of an anthem. Thanks, y'all. Thanks for everybody for tuning in here. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys.